slow. And in the summer of 2005, one of the shelters out in Carroll, Michigan, was going to be shut down by the state. And they had a lot of dogs out there. About 40, they, they had two weeks to either place or euthanize. And we went out there and took 25 of them off their property. And then that's kind of when it really started rolling. We don't make much off, we don't make anything off the donation, or not donation, adoption. It's basically donations in our own wallet. I mean, we don't have children, so this is kind of like our way of our energy and our way to, you know, to support something else. Some of our dogs come from puppy mills, and some of our dogs come from auctions. When we go there, our real goal is to get out those females that are somewhere between one and a half and three when we know that they're going to be bred every heat cycle. Because to me, I feel that's a real true save because it's not fair for some animal to be a breeding machine such as a dog like that. When you first get them, it's, it hits you kind of hard when you first see them. They really they stink real bad, they're dirty, their hair's all matted and real long. So sometimes you have to take them back, take shower them as soon as we get home and then Usually we are showering them right when we get home, and if the, we sometimes don't get home until midnight on a day trip all the way out there. A lot of times they'll let puppies out, like this guy. Oreo um, was let out at about three months, and he's supposed to be a French bulldog, but he's kind of our little mutant. One eye goes straight, and the other eye goes to the right side. Um, since we've had him, he's got really fat feet and webbed. And that's from walking on chicken wire. And their pads grow real thick to be able to balance themselves. Some of them come around rather quick. And I think it has a lot to do with our dogs. Our dogs coming around us. They see our dogs sitting next to us, licking us. And they think, okay, well, if those dogs are licking them, they must be okay. They're not going to hurt us. Those dogs aren't beaten. They're not abused that way. They're just neglected in which they... The way in which they keep them in these cages um, on top of each other no area to turn around um, no social interaction and unfortunately those are all the um puppies that are being sold to your local pet stores we have had some uh, puppy mill dogs come in with one was missing an eye it was neglected a uh, proper vet care it was just it died and then um, a lot of them we get have like rotted teeth there's like no teeth they're all rotting out i mean these puppy mill dogs it's just, it's a different type of, you know, getting these type of dogs because they've never been freed. They've never been outside of the cage. So once you get them, everything's new to them. They don't know what a biscuit is. They don't know what this is. It just, it's a totally different experience. It's more self-gratifying for me because these dogs haven't had a life like other dogs. So when you get them, they're, they've been living like four or five years in a cage like Bubbles. And then she gets out and now she's got a whole, totally different happy life, you know. Dr. Mark Hearn, North Oakland visiting vet. He's in Waterford. He's one of the only vets I have met in the Oakland County area that was willing to put his time aside to spay and neuter and do all the shots on these dogs at a highly discounted rate so that we can keep our adoption fees reasonable. He's very good about being there at any time of the day for any of them, running over here if we need emergent care, um, and he's just been a real help. We really thank him a lot because this would not be possible if he was not our vet.